The easier we can make it for people, the better. The only way to fight stigma and shame is to shine light on it. Ask your healthcare provider if Big Tarvi is right for you and visit BigTarvi.com to view the important facts, including important warnings. Hello there, welcome to Plus Talk on Plus Life, where we're all about turning positive into a plus. The AIDS Drug Assistance Program. What is it? Why is it important? Why do you need to know about it? Well, we've got our friend Brandon Maxada here, and he's got all the answers. Good to see you, Brandon. Thank you for having me, Carl. Good to see you. Thank you. Now, um, I know what ADAP is because I've benefited from ADAP, um, but I think so many people, you know, get an HIV diagnosis and then don't know where to start, especially if you don't have insurance. And we can get into why people don't get tested in the first place because they're worried that they couldn't deal with a positive um, diagnosis. But right. in the simplest, most plain English, everyday talk, what is ADAP and why, if I've been diagnosed HIV positive, do I need to know about it? ADAP is a uh, federal program in partnership with states that gives insurance for access on prescription dr drugs for people who are either underinsured or have no insurance. Now, we like to think that with the ACA, the Affordable Care Act passing, that everybody got insurance and everybody, you know, can get access to what they want. And that's just not necessarily the case. So there are still federal programs that are very important. ADAP for people living with HIV AIDS is the one of the most important programs. The only program that funds health care services for people living with HIV more is Medicaid. That's the number one payer. But ADAP is, is second. Uh, and ADAP is part of the Ryan White Care Act, which funds more um, diverse um, care and uh, services and supports for people living with HIV. But being what we know about HIV, that if you, tr if you treat it, treat it early, and you're adherent to your medications, you can be um, undetectable. And what we know in today's science is that undetectable equals untransmittable. That means me as a long-term survivor of HIV, who also benefited from ADAP at one point in my life, um, taking my medications every day, keeping my viral load suppressed, that through sexual contact, I cannot um, give my HIV to my partner or sexual partner, whoever it may be. And that's important. And that's one of the reasons why we're very um, focused on making sure people are aware of ADAP. We have an online directory so that if you are newly diagnosed, I mean, think of the emotions that you went through when you were first diagnosed. You know, there's so many emotions running through your mind. And hopefully you're linked to care. Hopefully you have a social worker who's there saying, hey, this we can get you in this program. But if not, you as a patient can go online and say, okay, this is a, this is a program that's available to me. Or equally important, you move. Um, ADAP is, is different in every state. We, we joke that there's two things that every state ADAP has in common. It's name, ADAP, and that you have to be HIV positive to be eligible. After that, the similarities from state to state change. So if you're living in New York and you have your ADAP services covering ABCD, you move to Kentucky and you find out, oh no, my ADAP in Kentucky, Kentucky only funds A and B. I don't get C and D here. Now you're freaking out, what do I do? So it's important. We always tell people before you move, if you're on ADAP, make sure you know where you're moving to and what the ADAP looks like, because it's very important. I think when people hear government funded program, that can set off alarm bells and freak people out. To me, it sounds like a whole lot of paperwork that I'm gonna be marched into an office, I'm gonna be judged by somebody, I have to declare my HIV status, obviously. What if I'm not ready to be talking about my HIV status? Um, what if I have experienced stigma from some of these you know, government healthcare services or things in the past? What are your, what's your advice to people who go, ah, this just doesn't sound like I can do this. I always tell people to take a very deep breath and think about you and your health. Um, and what would be your life be like if you weren't on the medications that will keep you healthy, hopefully make you attain an undetectable status. Um, it, stigma exists. That, there's no doubt about it. We, we have the HRC just came out with their annual uh, report about stigma in television and people's attitudes. We have a lot of work to do to combat stigma. Um, but I think if you're going to let stigma dictate your healthcare decisions, you're putting yourself in a very bad position. Um, so hopefully you don't run into that. Um, if it does happen, 
you know, go to someone and see if there's other services available uh, for you. But I think in most cases, if you're going to run into um, an ADAP counselor, coordinator, whoever it is within the ADAP Ryan White space, these are people who are aware that you have to be HIV positive. These are, they work with HIV positive clients on a daily basis. I think you'll find them to be most helpful. Um, and if you run into someone who's not, then go to plan B. And plan B may be saying, can I speak to your supervisor? Um, you know, there, there's always an, a remedy to a situation. It may not be an easy remedy, but there's always a remedy. And I think the more a patient is, uh, it's, it's proactive in their health, the better off they're going to be. You know, a lot of people, young people especially, are on their family, their parents' insurance plans, right? And they are not out perhaps about their sexual identity. They certainly don't want to talk about their HIV status with their parents. Um, you talk about how ADAP works alongside with people who are ins have insurance. I'm one of those people. That was the case for me back when I uh, made use of ADAP. Is there, what sort of assurances are there, are there any, that if you're facing this and you're on your parents' insurance, but you, you don't potentially want to tell them, but you've got to get on the treatment. Can ADAP help in any way there? There's always a solution. It, hopefully it's easy. And sometimes in life it is easy. It is easy, but a lot of times it's not. And I, I just think you have to continue to tell that message that you're taking care of yourself and your health. Um, you know, that we know that the life expectancy for people who are HIV positive and taking their medication adherently, and especially if they're undetectable, is the same as a person, their, their HIV negative counterpart. So those are yeah. the things you need to be thinking about. They're very important. And yes, you could be facing with a lot of anxiety, aside from family and everything else, uh, you know, stigma. Um, it's, it's just a, a very anxious time in your life when you find out you're newly diagnosed. And the best way to handle it is to confront it head on and do what you can do for yourself. Yeah, and that's, you, you make such a good point. So let's break it down in the, again, the, as, as simply as possible. I find out I'm HIV positive. I've got to get on treatment. What are the steps, Brandon, to getting on the ADAP program? Again, we're back to state by state. Sure. Okay, so um, in a very general sense, uh, you'll have to determine if you're eligible. And there is a, it's based on how much money you make. So if you're unemployed and you have no income, it's pretty easy, you're, you're going to be eligible. Um, you know, maybe you have a job and you don't make enough money. You could still be eligible for ADAP. Again, it's for people who are uninsured or underinsured. The process is very straightforward. Um, and then you'll get in touch, someone will get in touch with you and say, you are eligible. This is now what needs to be done. Best case scenario, you're also going to be linked to other services that would help you because again, ADAP is just prescriptions. Um, but there mm -hmm. are other services available that could be for dental, you know, other general health, those sorts of services. Yeah, and I should say that for people that are unable to obtain ADAP, it's not the end of the road, don't Correct. worry. Copay and payment assistant programs are offered by most HIV drug companies, and we're going to do a separate plus talk down the line um, about how one can apply for those kind of services too. But uh, ADAP in of itself is a, a just a, a lifesaver. It certainly has helped me. I know it helps a lot of people. And uh, we didn't get time to talk about, but I know in some states, not all of them, but in some states, um, even undocumented immigrants also Correct. qualify for ADAP. So we're going to put all the information up um, as a graphic somewhere here I think the kids do that on the okay. cool YouTube videos there'll be something right here, right right here right? that that's yeah you can click here now uh, and that will take you or, or at least advise you where to go for uh, ADAP uh, Brandon this has been great sorry it's so short but thank you for making the time to talk about this really important program Carl thank you so much for the invite Absolutely. That is going to do it for this Plus Talk. Remember, if you want more information, you can click on that link that we just talked about, but we'll also put it in the body of the social post, and we'll make sure it goes up on our website as well. Remember, you can follow us across social media. We are at Plus Life Media, and check out the website, pluslifemedia.com. All the info will be there as well. And until next time, be nice to one another. We'll see you soon.